the van all loaded, ready for an early start pike fishing in the morning. And the carp rods are well and truly put away now. And this is probably my favorite time of year and, and pike fishing especially. My early trips normally consist of me heading out with my own boat with just the lure gear. Um, it's a really nice way of searching a lot of water and finding a few pike and just getting in the mood for a bit of pike fishing. I launched my own boat early in the morning and the forecast was going to be quite bright and sunny. When I first head out in the boat on my lure fishing trips, I tend to get drawn back to areas that have been kind previous winters. So I'll normally have a, an area to start in that I'm confident with and just work from there. I think what I like about fishing from the boat with the lures is you can just drift with the tide and cover a lot of water. The key is just to keep moving until you find some fish. Once you've got that first bite, and the confidence there, you'll normally soon get another bite, but just keep searching for pike. Well, at last we've got a bite, and he's fighting quite hard. It's always nice on the lures. Ooh, <laughs> took a bit longer than expected, but we've uh, got the first one, only a little fella. big he is he's sort of a seven eight pounder I guess at best but on the old western lure the, it's like a roach pattern I should imagine I'll stick with that lure all day it's just a confidence thing but we get this fella back because I quite like to catch his mum this morning I've never found the Broaden rivers particularly good when the water's not flowing very hard but it wasn't long before the tide had turned and the flow starts dragging the other way um, I went to an area that has been kind before and carried on working the lures and we weren't long in getting another bite and it was a slightly better fish this time and I can't stress enough how exciting it is when you're lure fishing especially if you haven't had a bite for a little while and then whack the rod just folds in half. That's got to be the, the best bit when you feel one wallop into the lure. <laughs> well, this one made me jump when it whacked in the lure. We'd gone a little while without a bite, and then and this turned up, which I'd hazard a guess at a sort of low double, I guess. But, um, brilliant sport. I really do like lure fishing. Lovely looking fish. Had a few more small pike from that area, but thought it'd probably be best to start the engine and actually move on to an area that had been kind previous years. I think what I like about the lure fishing is the bites themselves. When, you, when you're fishing and you've got hold of the rod, sometimes you feel the bite develop, you'll get a couple of little rattles and taps where a pike is chasing it and, and, and nudging it, but when they actually get hold of it, there's no mistake in it that the rod just wallops in your hand and, and the fish is definitely on. And uh, this area that we'd motored to, which had been kind before, didn't disappoint on this trip either. If this is a fish, it's a big one. But it just feels like a dead body. Yeah, it's a big fish. This is a better one, a proper one. This feels like a real good one. Oh yes. What the hell? <laughs> Although it wasn't massive, it turned out to be the best fish of the trip. Probably the best looking fish of the trip as well with some really nice markings on it. I'm over the moon with this one. They, they haven't got to be huge to be good fun on the lures and this one nailed my, my go-to lure, the, the western lure. The, it's like a roach pattern. Um, really pleased with this. Beautiful pike. Had a few more small pike later in the afternoon, but all too soon it was time to think about turning the boat round and, and heading back to the slipway. I really enjoyed that first day's lure fishing and you can't beat a bit of lure fishing to, to, to whet your appetite for some pike fishing. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking about bigger pike and the best way to catch them is fishing static dead baits. So perhaps this time to get the dead bait rods out. Well, 
My second trip out was probably more my style of pike fishing and a, and a type of pike fishing that I enjoy more and more each winter now. Maybe I'm getting older and slightly lazier, but sitting behind dead baits with drop-off alarms on, the, on gravel pits is something that I really enjoy. So it was off to a local gravel pit, armed with dead baits and drop-off alarms in what looked like perfect conditions to see if we could get those drop-offs falling. I've always found the deeper parts of these gravel pits more productive for the pike in the winter, but being a day ticket water, you can never tell how busy it's going to be. And unfortunately, there was two carp anglers right in what I'd say were the prime swims. So I started on the other side of the lake and thought I'd give it an hour or two on that side and see if we could get a bite in the hope that I'd be able to move into that deeper water in the afternoon if someone packed up. I stuck with two of my favorite dead baits. I had a heron on one rod and an eel section on the other and gave it an hour or so in a swim and just kept on the move till eventually I noticed one of the carp anglers packing up on the other side nearer that deeper water so quickly rushed around there feeling a lot more confident that I might get a bite in that deeper spot. I think the most important thing about the setup for the for the gravel pit piking is that everything's super strong. The rig itself is really simple, it's a running rig with a, a run ring with a lead attached down to a buffer bead down to your wire trace, that's as simple as it needs to be. The other important thing is bait, I'm quite fussy with my bait and I make an extra effort to get really good fresh bait. I think this can make the difference between a good and a bad day's pike fishing. I felt fairly confident in the nearer the deeper water, so I was happy just to let the dead boat soak that bit longer. But to be honest, I hadn't been in the swim that long when probably my favourite noise of one of the drop off alarms sounded. As I walked up to the rod, I could see that the line was just peeling off the spool of the reel, and at last we'd got a bite off a pike. I think another thing I really like about this type of fishing is one minute you're completely chilled sitting in your chair just hoping for that bite and all of a sudden it's panic stations the alarm sounds and that pipe's there and that's why we go from completely chilled to panic in one second and that's that's what I like about fishing. When I lifted the net out of the water, it felt like it was a, a low double pipe, to be honest. And as I carried it over to the unhooking mat and, and took the hooks out of the fish, I guess it was a, a, a 12, 13 pound pike. It was a nice looking pike, a, a typical gravel pit pike, if I'm honest. Probably a little bit lean because it was still early in the year, but I'm never disappointed to catch a double figure pike. As I slipped that one back, I, I was hoping it wouldn't be the last bite of the day. As it turned out, no more bites came my way and I was already thinking about my next trip out. It was a perfect pike fisherman's morning. There was a bit of frost on the ground and the sun was then rising up and I couldn't wait to get out on my own boat on the Norfolk Broads. This is probably some of my favorite pike fishing. This is proper Broadland pike fishing. about a 20 minute journey down the river to reach the broad I was going to fish and it looked amazing on the river as well with the sun shining through the trees as we made our way towards the broad I was getting more and more excited as I got closer and closer 
Once I reach the broad, I, I prefer to swap over to the electric outboard to, to have more of a stealthy approach on the broad. They're only shallow waters, often three to four foot deep at most. As I put my rods together, I was hoping to find a few points. When I reached that first spot, it was time to get the rods out and all three rods were on simple float fishing setups. All three rods are on dead baits as well, but again, it's got to be strong, simple tactics. A float stop, a bead, an inline float with a small weight above a wire trace, slightly over depth with the dead baits laying on the bottom. I gave it about an hour in that first swim to be honest, in the back of my mind, I wasn't feeling that confident. It was clear blue skies without a breath of wind, which I normally find quite difficult conditions on the shallow broads. So I decided to move nevertheless. And as I moved, the weather changed and it started to rain. When I got the rods out in that second spot and it was raining, my confidence suddenly creeped up. I feel really privileged to live so close to the Norfolk broads and there's definitely a special atmosphere about the place. It's real wild natural fishing for me and that moment when your float slides away it could be a, a three pound pike, it could be a 33 pound pike and that's what makes me return to the broads. I hadn't been settled in that new spot very long at all and I was in for fish straight away. It's brilliant when you see one of those floats sliding along the surface they're the moments, they're, they're the, the reason we go pike fishing. And as I wound down into the bite and set the hooks, in the shallow water, the pike jumped clear out of the water and gave a real good scrap. It felt like a fairly nice fish as I was playing it, and I'd, I'd like to say that I, I netted the fish, but the truth is it, it jumped in the net more than me netting it. I think it gave itself up when it saw me in the boat, but it looked like a nice fish as it was resting in the net, and it was just nice to get a pike under my belt on the board. Bigger fish. There we are. Nice broadland mid double, I'd say, probably fifteen pound. Real result that one. Well, that was uh, probably worth, we, we put one bait quite long from the boat. I actually dropped it and then sailed away from, from the float to get a bit of distance between me and the float. And that's the rod that's gone off on a, on a lamprey with just the tip of its tail just cut off so they bleed nicely and they couldn't resist it. So pleased with that one. It's um, the first bite, gets your confidence up. Hopefully we'll get another bite this afternoon. We better slip this one back and get the rods back out. Sometimes that first bite of the day is the most difficult bite to get and it's it's almost a weight off your shoulders once you've, once you've got a bite. You know that the pike are on the feed and possibly there could be more chances ahead. I got the rod back out on the same spot where I'd caught that pike from and it wasn't long at all until the float had disappeared again and the bait runner was whizzing on this bite, a real strong bite. Yeah, like in the like in the lamprey today. I think it's that small. Do that in a minute. Although it didn't feel that heavy, the second fish, I thought it was a jack pike at first. But as it got closer to the boat, it got a little bit bigger. If I'm honest, it wasn't huge, but it would have been another double figure pike. So with two fish under my belt, and the rain was stopping. Things were looking on the up. Oh, he was smaller than that. Though. Out. And we catch another one on that, that looks good to go again. That does. That's a low double, that one, I'd say. A real distinctive tail on it, but probably 11, 12 pound, maybe. Brilliant police for that one. With that second pike safely returned, 
I thought it would make sense to try and get all three rods in that hot area. They'd all come on my left hand rod at long range. So I repositioned the boat a lot closer to that area and put two lamprey and one heron all in that spot. The day was getting on and I felt confident in this last spot of the day. Sometimes the broads can be quite tricky and it's quite easy to sit on there all day for no bites. So with two double figure pike under my belt, I kind of felt that there was more to come in that last hour or two. Just don't know how big they are till you see them. They it's pulling. hoping for a bite when we just had this move. It's, we've probably got about half an hour of light left and this is what I'd class as bite time when you're on the broads. So um, typically I'd, I think I'd have been disappointed if one of the floats didn't go and the float with the heron underneath it has just trickled away. And we got this. It is, it's a nice fish that one, it's got to be sort of mid upper doubles that one, steady. I think these bigger fish are best just to support the weight of them a bit more there. Really pleased with that. There's, um, fish that one isn't it? The light levels now were, were going far too quick in my opinion and it's this time of day when thousands of seagulls all come on the broad to roost. Before the light completely went I managed one more bite and although it was only a small pike I got it to the side of the boat I could see it was quite lightly hooked and felt confident of just unhooking it next to the boat for one quick look before I slipped it back and unfortunately it was, it was time to head home. Little fella. <laughs> Slip back. So that brings us to where we are now. We're now entering early December, so there's loads of pike fishing ahead for myself and I'm I'm itching to get back out again. So the van's all loaded up for the morning and I can't wait. We've like I said, we've got December, January, February, all great months for pike fishing. So good luck to anyone who's pike fishing themselves this winter and let's hope a few big pike turn up for everyone.